All right, guys, welcome to another episode. It's been a few days, almost a week since the last episode, so we're going to be kicking off the new week with another one. Or I guess more wrapping up the week with another episode. So in this episode, I'm going to be answering another question that came up that was brought up by Nick Cuff. Thank you very much for the question. It's an awesome question. Um, I love you guys' feedback. I love you guys' questions. So please feel free uh, to submit them. If there are questions that I've already answered, I'll just point you back into the into the library, whether YouTube or the podcast. But there are some questions that are worth addressing in, in more detail. You know, questions that I can spend 20 minutes, half an hour going over in as much detail as I can give you. So the question that Nick has goes, so the, the message goes, really love what you folks do for the training community. I'm sure you have a long list of uh, ideas, but here's another one. I've been a trainer for just over a year, and I reflect on my time as an apprentice and have always looked at that time in the sense of I wish I knew the do's and don'ts of a new trainer. Okay, so Nick has been training dogs for a year now, for just over a year. And that's a that's a benchmark for sure. That's a uh, that's definitely a, a good uh, a good timeline um, because at a year you've already had hopefully a year you've already had some experience in some dogs under your belt. Now, the way that experience goes, so let's say you have a year of experience working with dogs. There is a difference between working with dogs regularly for a year. I'm, and I'm not, I'm not suggesting Nick is in either of these categories, um, but, but there's a difference. There's two types of, two types of people. The, the person who's been training dogs for a year, and they've been doing it regularly for a year, or you have a person who trained the dog about a year ago and then maybe maybe they worked with a couple of dogs since then and in that time it's been about a year and in that year they worked about three four dogs now both of these types of trainers will label themselves as trainers with one year of experience but that's very different. Each person has a different experience. The one person has been working dogs regularly for a year. The other person started working with dogs a year ago, but they haven't really had as many dogs under their belt. This is why you have to be very careful and very aware of who you follow, who you listen to, who you take your dogs to, because that detail can be very deceiving, very overlooked, and is very important. I know people in the in the working dog industry that boast about their 15 years of experience working with canines, but then when you dissect their their resume a little bit more, you realize that they've really only only handled like two dogs or three dogs and maybe like they they've assisted in the training of a couple of other dogs so in a span of 15 years this person has really only worked with like four five dogs tops i know people like that okay and they'll boast of their 15 years of experience really it's been about six or five years with one dog and then about another five or six years with another dog and then the remaining time they were supervisors to the handlers so they're not lying when they said they've been in canine for 15 years but the number the volume of dogs that they have worked has been very minimal so you have to uh, be aware of that when you list your your experience. Okay, so like if you're a new dog trainer, like Nick, for instance, uh, I don't know what Nick's situation is, but maybe let's say Nick was applying for a dog training position, and some other guy, Joe Schmo, is also applying for the same position, 
and they both have about a year of experience and they're both applying for the same company, for the same position, even though a year does look like a long time for if you're brand, brand new, for somebody who operates a business, one year probably doesn't look like much, right? But if if you are the type of person that has had one year, but you've worked dogs very consistently, in that year, you might have trained well over 50, maybe even 100 dogs, plus assisted in the training of many more dogs, depending on what type of operational tempo you had. So don't feel bad. Don't feel like you're new if you only have about a year of experience. My first year of experience, because I went to a dog training school, and in this school, I I stayed there for six months. And in those six months, I mean, I was, you know, I was getting one dog and then the next dog out, getting one dog and then the next dog. I'm working every single dog. And then we get another shipment of about 15 dogs. And then we'd work those dogs over and over, right? First six months, that's what I did. That's a lot of dogs that I put under my belt in just those six months. Even though I had less than a year of experience, I had already handled and assisted in the training. And yes, I was learning, but I had already handled and assisted in the training and trained already more dogs than some handlers that had more time, um, of you know, more experience, more time in the industry than I did. So look at those details. But anyways, I know I went off a little bit. I just wanted to add that because the, the one year to some of you might sound, oh, that's nothing. But we don't know Nick's situation. He might have trained a lot of dogs in that year. Okay, so now let's go to the question. I reflect on my time as an apprentice and have always looked at that time in the sense of I wish I knew the do's and don'ts of a new dog trainer. So an episode basically on the do's and the don'ts of a new dog trainer. So let's go over the do's and the don'ts of a new dog trainer. Okay. I feel comfortable addressing this topic for a couple of reasons. One reason, I have been new at one point in my career, right? So I know what it what it's like to be new. The other reason, I worked at a dog training school for seven years as an instructor at a dog training school and I worked with a lot I mean we, we had like four three to four classes three classes per year and we had these students for 12 weeks per class and in the past year we've had two four-month classes and each class has like, you know, 30 to 35 students. So that's that's well over 100 students. I don't feel like doing math right now. But that's definitely well over 100 students. Um, really like per year almost. Okay, so I have worked with hundreds of brand new students. People that were brand, brand new to dog training. So this is why I feel adequate answering this question, the do's and the don'ts of a new dog trainer. So I'm going to be addressing that in the next 20 minutes or so. All right, so let's go over um, let's go over the over the do's. Okay, so some of the do's of when you're new. If if you're new, if you're embarking on this journey. Okay. And by the way, I'm going to plug my book here in a second. I actually wrote a book on that topic, which is the uh, info every dog trainer should know. So that book is on Amazon. Look for um, William Garrido, G-A-R-R-I-D-O on the Amazon search bar. Or you could just look up info every dog trainer should know. Uh, it's also on my YouTube channel. I have the audiobook on there, the audiobook summary on there for free, so you don't have to pay for it. So 
that um that book has a bunch of articles that are very very beneficial for for dog trainers and at, at, at all stages it's a bunch of articles it's not like a uh, it's not like a in a in a straight timeline where it goes this is chapter one chapter two chapter three it's just a bunch of different topics that you can pick out and go okay in in the next 10 minutes i feel like going over this chapter right here and there's topics on there on, on how to avoid burnout um you know the different different uh approaches to dog training etc 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 so pick up that book it's got a lot of good information on there especially if you're new and even if you're not new, it's a good resource. Get a bunch of great, great feedback from people who have bought that book, who have read that book. And again, if you don't want to buy it, just go to the YouTube channel. Go to Dog Training is My Passion on YouTube. And uh, you'll see I have a playlist on there labeled uh, Info Every Dog Trainer Should Know. So it's on there for free. All right, so some of the do's for uh for a new dog trainer okay do have an open mind and that might be super simple super easy advice for some of you for some of you you might have to go what are you talking about i do have an open mind what i mean by that is unlearn everything you think you know okay because the reason that you're new is because you are wanting to get into an industry, do something, get better at something that you have very little experience or knowledge with. Okay, Or you might have zero experience, zero knowledge. So some of the knowledge that we collect over the years as pet people, as pet owners, not dog trainers, but as pet owners... Some of the knowledge that we collect about dogs come from other pet owners. And pet owners are typically not good dog trainers. Typically not. Okay, some are. But very, very typical for the average pet owner to be terrible at training dogs. This is why we have an entire industry dedicated to the training of the average pet dog. So chances are the information that you've gotten came from other pet pet owners okay so you might have heard some information that goes well you know if your dog uh you know if, if your dog um pees or or you know or poops just grab its nose rub it on it and this might be like conventional wisdom that got passed down to you which may have been effective to the person who told you about it, but might not be effective for your dog and for your situation. If you have a dog like Rust, one of my dogs, and he pees or poops in your house, and you try to grab him to rub his nose like, uh, on it, you're going to get bit, period. You wouldn't know that if you're new at this. So... Be very, very aware of the knowledge that you have gathered over the years from your peers, from your family, from other pet owners, and realize that that information is very likely either not complete or just completely wrong. So be aware that's that's a, a, a do, and I guess, a, and also a, a bit of a don't at the same time. Do have an open mind. Um, don't be so willing to accept conventional wisdom about dogs that you've heard from other people okay another do study it it just like hurts me a little when i hear or see people bragging about the fact that they go oh i just learned through experience i just learned you know the dogs taught me everything yeah you know, these are typically the people that are anti dog training schools or dog training programs they're like oh you don't need a dog training school it's a ripoff you can just learn through experience the dogs will teach you yes you could also learn how to drive by just getting in the car and figuring out the rules of the road and hitting people and and getting hit and and veering off the road you can definitely learn that way and you're gonna learn 
right? You could learn to do a bunch of things by just figuring it out and go, oh, well, the, you know, the, the industry, the situation would teach me, yes, that's one way to learn. Or another way to learn is to have somebody who knows how to drive teach you how to drive. Okay? Somebody who knows how to cook guide you and teach you on how to put ingredients together. So dog training is a specialty. I am a huge fan of dog training schools. I've gone to two myself, two very in-depth dog training schools. One, three months plus an additional three months that I that they let me hung out there and keep learning. So a total of six months. This was a US canine in Louisiana. The second one was at Starmark Academy or Triple Crown at the time. When I went, it was Triple Crown, and then they made the switch to Starmark. They changed it just as I was going through the program. So that's the other in-depth dog training school I went to. And I will like forever be grateful that I had those, that opportunity. I had two instances in which people with a lot more experience than me put a program, laid out a program together for me and I'm, I'm, I'm always going to be grateful for that. I could have learned all of that on my own, but it would have taken me several years, a lot more mistakes. Just like, you know, I could have learned how to drive just by getting on the highway and, and figuring out on my own. There's no doubt in my mind I could have learned how to drive like that. But following somebody's guidance definitely is helpful. So do study okay if, even if you go well i can't afford a dog training school i understand i get it they're not it's not cheap okay so even if you cannot afford a dog training school study save some money go to seminars um read books and you might go well i don't know where to start what books do i read start doing your research okay there's a very good saying that goes when there's when the student is ready the teacher shows up Okay, so really, really study, focus your energy, watch videos. Um, and you have to be selective with your videos too because any freaking, any douchebag out there is putting doctrining content. Um, and, and it's not always, not always good stuff. Okay, uh, you just have to be very selective with that. I do have a dog training channel. I have over 600 videos on my YouTube channel. Um, and I try to be very transparent about the whole thing. And I have videos on a bunch of different topics. But I realize that a lot of the information I'm, I'm given, I'm given to a camera. And it could be reaching people from all different levels. So um, I don't get too, too in-depth in certain things, but I do put a lot of good content. There are other people out there too. Some of the people that I suggest you follow, okay, I, ha I have a, a, a video on this too on YouTube. Some of the people that I suggest you follow, if you're new, uh, one, I'm going to plug Dutch Training as my passion. I got a bunch of good information on there. Um, another guy that I would suggest you follow, Mike DeBruzzo from K91. Okay, he's got a bunch of good information on, on his YouTube channel as well. Plus, he also has an online membership, I'm, uh, I believe. Another one, one of my all-time favorites, Dave Croyer. I've talked about this guy in already a few episodes. That's how big of a fan I am of his content and his work. Uh, the guy puts a tremendous amount of knowledge so if i was new and somebody told me hey dude like dave croyer has there's this guy who has accomplished a lot in dog training not just in sports but in other other parts of the canon of the dog training industry and he has a bunch of videos on this website and it only costs ten dollars a month i would have signed up in a heartbeat and i would have definitely seen the value that it brings i still watch his videos um it's just a ridiculously low amount, and the amount of content that he pours in there, it's just amazing. So if I was a new dog trainer, if you came to me and you was like, hey, I'm a new dog trainer, where do I go? Free stuff, you can find some on YouTube, you just have to be selective. Um, but if you're willing to invest a little bit of money, put a little bit of skin in the game, I would say go to Dave Croyer. Okay, I think it's DaveCroyerTV.com or something like that. 
Now, just a disclaimer, he's not sponsoring this video. I don't get paid a dime from Dave by promoting his video, his, his content. I just truly, truly believe in the, in the product. I believe it's more than worth what, what he charges. So if I was a new dog trainer, I'd jump on that right away. Okay. Uh, some other things that I would re I also have a video on YouTube on a bunch of books that you should read. I have an entire video on um, book uh, reading suggestions. I have reviews on different books. Uh, go to books or product review. So some books that I would say, Dog Training with the Touch by Tom Rose and Anita Cheek. I, I believe that's the co-author. But Tom Rose, Dog Training with the Touch. Okay. Awesome, awesome book. It's just so detailed and it and it's laid out in like sections, categories. Not like it's not linear like chapter one, two, three. It's like, okay, I want to learn about bite work. Boom, there's a there's a chapter for that. Okay, I want to learn about tracking. There's a, a chapter for that. I want to learn about obedience, the flip finish, the retrieve, this and that. He's got a, a nice, nice layout on that book. And plenty of plenty of uh, pictures too, that kind of show you the techniques that he's trying to articulate in his in his book. So, Dog Turning with a Touch is another book that I strongly recommend. If you are new, do get that book. Dog Turning with a Touch, freaking freaking awesome book. Uh, another awesome book if you're more into the into the working dog aspect of it. Uh, Controlled Aggression by Jerry Bradshaw. Okay, Controlled Aggression by Jerry Bradshaw. Awesome, awesome book as well. Now, some of these books that I'm telling you about, uh, they they I mean the books, the the membership with Dave Croyer, they're definitely going to, uh, you know, give you a head start. They're going. I mean, it is an investment. You, you're not you're not paying ten thousand dollars, but you are gonna put a little bit of skin in the game. I mean, the books are not even that expensive. Uh, I would say definitely get those. You can even get them used. Okay. So I would say do get those books. Uh, Doctrine, Doctrine with the Touch, Controlled Aggression. Signed up for uh, Dave Croyer's uh, video library. Uh, look up some other trainers on YouTube like Doctrining is My Passion, like uh, uh, K91 by Mike DeBruzzo. I just have to, you just have to be... Um, Again, selective on YouTube because any idiot has horrible advice on YouTube. Terrible. And they're telling you, you should go ahead and do this. Freaking terrible, terrible, terrible. So I'm not going to tell you um, because I, I don't want to get into that. Because if I start saying one name, now I feel obligated to tell you also this guy and also this guy. And also the, then, then then it just consumes the entire episode. Um but anyway, so I would say those are the do's. Be willing to learn more than what just the dog can teach you, okay? This whole bullshit of, oh, you don't need to go to a school. You don't need to go here or that. You don't need to do that. The dogs will teach you. That is so dumb. Yeah, yeah no shit the dog's going to teach you, but you can invest a little bit of your time and a little bit of, of your money if you're not even willing to go to a dog training school and specialize at least invest some of your time put some skin in the game get you know get some of some of these books uh sign up for dave Kerr's uh books as well uh, i'm sorry video library uh ivan balabanov is another great resource uh i believe his website is called training without conflict he does up some videos on there. Now, they are definitely priced higher, okay? I do have uh, a couple of his videos, and they're definitely priced higher. Um, good information, too. But, I mean, but personally, I feel like I, I, li I like Ivan Balabanov's content, but I feel like what Dave Crowley gives you, it's just much, much more of a much more value for the amount of money that you're getting, that you're paying. But Ivan Balabanov also another great resource. 
Uh, that's if you know you want to go on a budget. If you are willing to spend the money, if you are willing to invest in your education, I would say dog training school. Now, what dog training schools? I have an entire. I have a video on that too on YouTube. And I, the reason I'm telling you this is I'm I'm not trying to get you to just watch every video on YouTube. Although if you did on my channel, that would be awesome. So make sure you go and subscribe. Subscribe. But I'm also letting you know because I have spent time talking about certain books and about dog training schools. So go on there. You should find it. But very briefly, you know, I want to tell you if you are willing to spend and invest a little bit more in, in getting a formal education, do your research. I could tell you this school, right? Like I could tell you USK. Now, to me, I had a great experience, but that was also 12 years ago. And I'm sure they're operating the same way. Well, I had a great experience. But, you know, maybe let's say, let's say, uh, you know, two of the staff members leave and now it's just him and one other person. Maybe it changed. Uh, maybe they're in the middle of a transition. You have to be very careful with that, right? But overall, yeah, I would recommend US Cana. I went there and I learned a ton. But you still have to do your own additional research too, right? Uh, another school I went to, Doc, um, Star Market Academy or Triple Crown. It was an amazing experience. It was awesome. I loved it. But if you're listening to this podcast 10 years from now or five years from now, or maybe even three, two years from now, who knows? The school might be better, way better. Or it might be different. So you have to uh, you have to be careful when you talk about schools because um, also I could tell you don't go to this school because I have a couple of lists, a couple of uh, schools too that I would say, hell no. You couldn't even pay me to go there. But by the time you listen to this episode, those schools might have a different structure, might, might be different. So again, go go do your research. I will definitely vouch for US K9. I went to that school. I will definitely vouch for Starmark Academy. I went there as a student. I was an instructor there, and I I I'm a strong believer in that in that uh, in that system, in the knowledge that that comes from there. Uh, knowing Jerry Bradshaw on a personal level, I would say put some skin in the game. Go to Tar Heel K9. Um, you know, formal schools like that from people that I, that I know, I would say go to those. There's also plenty of workshops that you can go to. You know, there are uh, seminars. So I'd say get as much of a formal education as you can. That's another do. All right. Um, another do work on for a new dog trainer, work on your people skills. You have to. This is not the dog training business. This is the people business. You truly are working with people. So another do, do improve or do work on your communication skills. Seriously, you, you'll thank me for this. Do work on your socialization skills. Do work on your, um, you know, on your public speaking, your communication skills do work on that okay community communication does it is a set of skills it is a skill so you have to get better at it okay if you're if you're good uh socially um if, and you're socially competent it just makes the client relationship so much easier it makes it so that clients really listen to you it makes it so that clients do follow through Okay, so at least they're more likely to follow through. So do, I know they do, do work on your communication skills. Trust me, trust me, trust me. It'll make life so much easier. Okay, the dogs are not going to write the check. It is the people business. Uh, I know they do. This is a big one, in my opinion. A lot of people overlook. I know they do. Do have confidence in yourself. 
Okay, so by default, the, the don't contrast to that would be don't beat yourself up for being new. Don't. Okay, I know a lot of people that have potential, that are good trainers. They, ha they have the potential, they have the skill, but they truly don't have a good self-image. They, they, they think, oh, crap, I suck. That's just a mental thing. Okay, they, there's a good chance they say that in other areas of their life. You have to have a healthy sense of self-respect. If you're new, let's say you have two people that are new, okay? Two people that are brand new. Let's say you're twins, you're best friends, you go into the industry, you go to the same doctor in school, or you both learn through experience, through apprenticeships. Both of you have the same exact path, but one of you has a healthy self-image. One of you goes, shoot, man, I, I, I'm good at this. I'm, I'm getting the hang of this. I love this. I'm, I'm, I think I got that right. I think, I, man, I'm good. I'm good at this stuff. You know, maybe I was born for this. And the other person's attitude is more like, oh, man, I suck. This suck. I, I can't believe I screwed that up. Oh, I'm so terrible. I'm such an idiot. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Oh, my gosh. I, I, that is so difficult for me. Same people, same skill level, same path. One is very optimistic, has a very healthy uh, self-image. The other beats themselves up a lot. Who do you think is going to get better faster? That's a no-brainer. You, your answer should already be there. The optimistic person will be better because they already believe in themselves. They already believe they can be better. Whereas the person that doesn't, the person that has a very low self-esteem when they're new, because they're new, it's easy to have low self-esteem when you're new because you're going, man, I'm not good at this. But you got to be careful with that self-talk because it can be really damaging. Whereas this person will have the same exact experience, same exact experience as the other person, but the fact that they have a, a, a more unpleasant, more negative attitude about the whole thing, like, oh, I'm, I'm new, so I suck, they will it will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. They will automatically act as though they are not new. And I know this because I see people with awesome, awesome potential, great skill, but they don't fully believe in themselves and they self-sabotage. I've seen it with a lot of new people and I've seen it with people that have some years in, in the industry. Like, Here's here's how I how I am. I'll give you a little bit of a secret. I talk I talked to my friend about this too. And uh, you know, here's how I am. I'm almost a little bit delusional where I know I'm I'm good. Right? I, I I know I'm I'm valuable and I know my shit and and I do have the experience to back it up. I have worked with so many different types of dogs and I've seen so many different types of problems and I've experienced so many things in the industry in different areas of the industry from explosive detection, protection training, service work, pet training. So I do have the ammunition to back up this, this healthy self-image that I have. And sometimes I do get checked. Sometimes I do get put in my place by certain experiences. Sometimes I do get humbled but I bounce right back. I'm like, no, fuck that. I am good. And and and, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. I'm actually good. Okay? Um, not in an arrogant way, but like I get people that tell me, man, that is freaking awesome. How'd you do that? Um, and I just, I just think that in general, like y you might go, well, bullshit. Like Will's, I mean, dog training is my passion. Will, he's such an idiot. He's, his training sucks. I don't know why he thinks he's good. He's just delusional. He said it. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's crazy. He's not good. But if I, if I think I'm good and you go, no, you're not good. But if I think, I, if I'm convinced that I am, how does that hurt you? It doesn't. It'd be like if I were to tell you, hey, the sky is purple, and you go, you're an idiot. It's not purple, it's blue. And I go, no, 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 it's purple. I'm convinced it's purple. How does it hurt you that my perspective on the sky, on the same thing we're looking at, is slightly different?
if it doesn't affect you and it doesn't affect the people that I work with, then piss off, go away. I mean, it doesn't matter. I would rather be slightly on the delusional side that I am freaking good than, oh, man, I suck. Oh, this sucks. I'm not good at it. Oh, I'm just, my timing is bad. Oh, it's because I'm, I'm new. It doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. If, if your level of experience will dictate how you do, your attitude will be like the, the, you know, the, the cherry on top, the, the attitude will be the one thing that will make a big difference regardless of your experience level. So that's another do, and by default, a don't. Okay, another do, do believe in yourself. Do not have negative self-talk. Being new is not a bad thing. It's just It's just a stage. It's just part of it. So embrace the fuck ups. You're going to, um, you're going to make mistakes, and it is okay. Just look at it as okay. Well, I made a mistake. How do I adjust that? Okay, and that never ends. You should always feel that way, even though at this stage in my life, I've twelve years, which is really twelve years is not that much. Really, just only a tiny fraction. Okay compared to some of the people that I look up to and admire, they have like 20 years, over 20 years, well over 20 years. And um, and even though I know I am still on my journey to get better, I know that even though I am still learning and I am still getting better and I still have more ground to cover, I know throughout every step of that journey, I know I'm good. And that might be a little delusional, but it doesn't bother you, so doesn't bother me it just makes the experience so much easier for me so much better for me so much better for my dogs and i believe you manifest everything that you carry deep deep down so let's say that's another do work on that okay i guess some of the don'ts would be uh just like i i went over by default when i address some of the do's you know don't have a shitty attitude um don't um Don't sabotage yourself. Don't have the negative self-talk. Don't be close-minded. Don't lose your patience. Okay, realize that dogs are just animals. They're not trying to mess with you. Another episode on the podcast on how to control your emotions, a few episodes back. It's an awesome, awesome episode. Uh, I got really good feedback from that episode. People really liked it because I'm pretty raw about this whole thing. If you haven't noticed by now, I'm going to say how it is. Uh, I don't care if some people get offended. I, I'm going to say how it is. So that episode, I, I really poured a lot of a lot of myself into that episode. Uh, so go check it out. But do have a good attitude, okay? Do... Um, Do realize, okay, so I was on the don't. So don't don't take it out on the dogs. Don't lose your patience. Do be patient. Real, do realize that these are just animals. That they're just animals. That they, they're they just learning in the best way that they can. So don't lose your patience. Don't make it about you. Don't, don't make it egotistical. Don't. Don't be an arrogant douche. Because when people start doing that, they start sacrificing the dog. Now, when I said I am good and, I've, and I'm convinced that I am good, that's a good self-image. There's a difference between that and arrogance. Okay? Arrogance is when you boast, when you're like, fuck all of you. I am better than everybody else. That, that would be arrogant. I'm not arrogant. I just have a healthy self-image. And I constantly work on it. It is my obligation, my my job to work on that. I need to have a good self-image for me to be good. That's how I contribute to the industry. That's how I can help my clients is by me believing that I am that good, but not arrogant, okay? Not about ego. This isn't, and I believe egotistical people and, and arrogant people, I don't believe that comes from confidence. I, I truly believe that's insecurity, 
And the reason that they're arrogant and, and the reason that they boast and the reason that they are cocky, it's because they have that little voice inside of them that tells them you're not good enough. And consciously, they want to shut that voice up by being loud and by seeking validation and and trying to get opportunities for them to prove to themselves, see, I am good. So that little voice needs to shut the fuck up. That little voice that tells me, no, dude, you suck. And they go, shit, that voice is telling me I suck. I got to do something to prove myself and to prove to everybody that I don't suck. So I truly believe being arrogant and cocky, that's not confidence. I believe that's lack of confidence. Okay. And the other the person might say, no, that's not true. Okay. But like when you're constantly, when you're seeking opportunities to, to, uh, to prove that you are better than somebody else, really you're just trying to seek validation you're trying to look for evidence that you are good it's like your your track record it's like your way to get evidence because deep down that little voice is nagging at you telling you you suck and so what happens is you're going fuck no i don't suck i i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna prove that i'm better than this and i'm gonna be loud about it so that everybody knows that i'm good I truly believe that's where arrogance comes from. It comes from a place of insecurity. Okay, like the 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 the, the crazy competitive person that just has to win everything. Which hey, I like to win too. But like the person that that seeks opportunities for somebody else to lose, and for them to prove that they're better than. I truly believe you might disagree with me, and I don't care. But I really don't care. But, you know, you might disagree with me, especially if you're competitive. You might go, no, 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 I'm not like that. But I truly believe deep, deep down, that little voice is telling that person, you suck. You need to find evidence that you don't. And maybe that's good. Maybe that's not good. I don't know. But um, I don't think you need to be arrogant. I don't think you need to be cocky. I don't think you need to prove to the world that you are better than somebody else or that or that you have to be loud about your uh you know your accomplishments um or every little thing that you do go hey guys look what i did i don't think you need to to have a good self-image i think that's a much deeper conversation that you have to have with yourself that eventually maybe gets better with meditation um with uh you know, life experiences, but whatever. That's I'm really going into an entirely different episode right now. Let's let's stick to the to the episode. I'm gonna wrap it up here pretty soon. But th- those would be the the don'ts. Don't be arrogant. Okay. Don't lose your patience. Don't close your mind. Uh, don't self sabotage. Don't don't have that negative self talk. That would be, you know, one of the things that I would say are in the don'ts category. I'm sure I'm overlooking some. If you have some do's and don'ts that that you have found are helpful for you, that helped you out, please let me know. Put it on the comments. And that way we can all see what else we, we have as far as the do's and the don'ts of a new dog trainer. All right, guys. See you guys in the next episode. Have a good weekend.